think we're going to have a pretty light day today. Uh, running down the usual suspects. Um, the VLC viewer, uh, we're going to put some, all, all of the release candidates right now have slightly elevated crash rates, and we have a bunch of fixes. So we're going to be re-spinning those hopefully early next week and uh, and getting updates out for them, uh, trying not to make our recent improvements in crash rate go away. Uh, so be watching for those. Uh, same same goes for the visual outfit outfit browser, and there will be a new main branch. Um, the 64-bit viewer is actually coming together. We might see a project viewer pretty soon. Everybody keep your fingers crossed. Um, coming along. Uh, we are actually spending a bunch more time on it now. Uh, so, a few, few corners to, to clean out, but it's coming along. Uh, and... Then there is the uh, extended extended skeleton in Bento. We have a new version of that project viewer that is either out or about to be out any minute now. And uh, we're hoping that that will be the last project viewer and that we will be able to go to uh, release candidate status on that one real soon now. So everybody keep your fingers crossed. Uh, so that's that's the pipeline. Uh, we we do have other things in, in the works. There's some voice work going on. Um, but I don't expect that to be out in a in a project viewer real soon because there's some glitches that need to be dig uh, dealt with. Um, so uh, that's pretty much where we are. Uh, some source changes that will be coming out. I'm not sure which development branch they'll show up first in. We're doing a big cleanup of the asserts, we're doing a big cleanup of all the throwing and catching of exceptions, uh, and we are continuing to do um, more cleanup of uh, ways in which the rendering pipeline gives up too suddenly and, and, and crashes rather than just not rendering whatever it was. So. Um, Lots of those improvements are on the way. They will show up in one of these branches. I'm not sure which one um, pretty soon. So, uh, and those are good fixes to get into your code. So, uh, and that's pretty much the news of the week. So the floor is open. Uh, no, I don't think we have a firm timetable for that, Whirly. Um, the, uh, we will be meeting with Vivox. Is it, let me look. We have a regular monthly thing with them. Is that next week? Yes, that, that's next week. So we'll we'll be talking with them next week about the timetable. No, it is not. Um, that's a grid wide thing. Uh, well, I think you know that that's not correct. You do not need anything special to access a DD. Uh, 
I will I will mention at my next meeting with the support people, I will mention that that has been incorrectly communicated. Um, we have had a we uh, e email it to me, please, and I'll I'll follow it up. Um, we have had a situation for uh, the last few weeks where uh, new accounts don't show up on Aditi when they should. Uh, the fix for that is in the pipeline, but it's it's not out yet. We're we're changing how we manage some of the account data, and Aditi is kind of in a in between state at the moment. So existing accounts ought to still be there, but uh, uh, new accounts are not automatically there. You have to ask support to please clone them, and then they can do it. Uh, it, it's it's got to do with the back end of how we store the uh, the account data. Um, we're we're doing a lot of back end work on uh, on how all kinds of personal data, including accounts, are stored in a in a much much secure, more secure way. That's right. Yeah, Oz at. Um, And uh, yeah, I mean it's part of a it's part of a large set of changes that we're making. So, uh, but in in fact, it will um, it, it'll make it'll make a bunch of account management issues easier over time. When when the change is complete, Aditi and Agni will be using the same account credentials information. So when you change your password on Agni, it will have been changed everywhere immediately. Um, so you won't have to keep track of separate passwords. Uh, which is which is as much a, 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 a benefit for developers as it is for you, even more of a benefit for developers than it is for you, because we have, in addition to Agni and Adivi, we have other test grids and they'll all be using the same data. Now. The 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 inventory updates will still happen only as part of the nightly batch, but the but the password data will be immediate or very nearly immediate. I've been at, getting at a teleport spammer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kitty, we have talked about. We have talked about the possibility of doing some kind of queuing system for uh, teleports, but it's it's kind of problematic. Um, the if you think about the user flow for that, um, managing that queue is not very easy, right? So if I'm trying to teleport to a place. And I, and I, and I can't. And I decide I want to get into the queue. Well, then, what happens when I get to the head of the line? Do I get a teleport invite? Um, how long do I get to block the head of the line before the person behind me gets a chance to come in? If there's only one space in the region, um, if I just don't answer, then do I just get to block the line? Um, if, you know, and how long do I do it for? And what if I've gone on to do something else and I've forgotten all about it? 
Um, what if I've logged out and then logged back in, have an entirely different session? Is the is the is my place in the queue part of the session, or is it part of my identity? Um, it's um, it's kind of a problem. I don't know actually how much trouble it is for the region to have people trying to teleport into it and failing. Uh, it's a pretty short code path um, for the at least for the region you're trying to get into. Um, so it's and something we've talked about. It's not something we've come up with a solution where we're really happy with the, the user experience of. If somebody, you know, has an outline that they want to that they want to suggest, I'm I'm more than happy to to hear about it. Um, personally, what I'd rather do is try to find ways to make regions hold more avatars. But um, that's that's uh, that's a, a, an entirely different set of issues. Um, actually, uh, there's, from what I'm understanding, there's actually a HUD that's supposed to be able to um, repeatedly spam you to teleport to a particular region. But every time I've tried to do that manually, it crashes the viewer. Uh, okay. Yeah, it wouldn't be a very difficult HUD to write if you were. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know how how bad they are for the region. Actually, they're probably uh, they're they're probably harder on the region you're leaving than the region you're you're trying to enter. Actually. Yeah, I would imagine so too. And actually, I would rather see the regions hold more avatars than to have right. to spam the to well, spam that's, repeatedly. I mean, it would even be nice to see homesteaded regions have more than 20 avatars. Right. I mean, it's, it's no matter what, I, I, you know, figuring out how to get regions to support more avatars is, is certainly something that we'd, we'd like to do. And, and from time to time, we, we think about, we, we do spend some time thinking about it. Um, the, the, the real, uh, I don't know, the, the, there are a lot of different dimensions of, of that problem, uh, right? If, it doesn't do that much good to put a hundred avatars to allow a hundred avatars in the region if that if the result is going to be that it's going to lag all the viewers to death. Um, so, um, for example, uh, so we're we're it's something that we spend some time thinking about from time to time, and it's definitely on our list of of uh, high value changes to make. Uh, but uh, we're we're not really really ready to 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 try much of anything with it right this minute. So it's a good question, though. Very good question. Um, and especially for big events, you know, we like we'd like to be able to support more more and bigger events. That's That'd be a nice thing. I, I don't think it is because the the big cost in teleporting is packing up all of the state information about your avatar, including all the states of all, you know, everything there is to know about how all of your scripts are running. Uh, and then you have to copy all that data over to the other simulator, and then you have to unpack it all, right? But before you unpack it all, you make the decision about whether or not you're going to let the avatar in at all. 
And um, so there's actually a, an awful lot of code that runs to to instantiate you in the new region that it never gets a chance to run if it turns out that the region is full, because that's a pretty early check. So it, it may be that you're packing up your avatar in one region and then just immediately unpacking it again. Oh, good. If that's what Simon said, then I, I, I probably had it right. <laughs> Any other fun new topics? Going to be a short uh, meeting today? I think there was something on the um, development page about um, abuse reports? Something with regards to abuse reports? Um, we're working on a system for getting, for harmonizing the categories for abuse reports. So right now, categories for abuse reports are, are handled in each viewer, and not all viewers are up to date, and that is, not all viewers are using the same set of categories that the the official viewer is using and that's kind of a problem and we recognize that that's kind of awkward and it's hard for people to update but uh, it does actually mess up the support process when you use categories that aren't in the official list um, where the official list is the one in our viewer so what we're working on and I should poke at this is uh, there's going to be a new cap that you'll use to get what the categories are, um, all localized and everything. Um, and then um, there is not a wiki, there's just the viewer source code. Uh, and uh, so you'll, and then once we introduce that cap, we'll ask everybody to please update their viewers to get the, get the current list that way rather and, and take the hard coded list out of the viewer. Um, and that way everybody will be reporting abuse using the same categories. Uh, and that will be, that will make life better for the people who actually are on the receiving end of those abuse reports, trying to use them to act on them. Uh, you should file abuse reports, and if you have some more information than that, you know, that there's more specific information on the repo of how to do something inappropriate, um, feel free to file an SEC, a security bug report. But only if you actually know what it was. Uh, if you don't, then... Um, it's, it's, uh, I should, I should repeat this every time I mention that stuff. If you think something is going on that where somebody's getting some escalated privilege level or exploiting a, a, 
a, a capability that they shouldn't be able to exploit, whatever, whatever it is. Um, it's very important that you make those reports in a very, very timely way, as soon as possible after you do it, because that way we'll still be able to get the log file um, information. And you have to be very specific about exactly where and exactly when it occurred so that we can go get the log data. Um, we don't keep the server logs for very long. It, 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 it varies a little bit and uh, it's not important to go into it. But basically think of it as typically only a few days. So if you file a report that says, you know, a week ago somebody uh, did the following bad thing and it was really awful and they sure, certainly shouldn't have been able to do it and, 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 and obviously they've got this superpower, um, then we'll be very interested in the report, but we won't actually be able to do anything at all with it because those log the log files for the server will be gone. So do not take a long time doing it. Um, I I should I should emphasize as clearly as possible that describing a problem in chat here does not constitute reporting it. It will not be acted upon. You need to put it into an abuse report and or a, a security JIRA. Okay, Oz, I can understand that, but I have a question with what sure. you're saying. Is is that uh, is when you're talking about accessing elevated funk features, you're talking about things such as accessing the estate manager's roles and things like that, as well as uh, access I don't know anything. It is that you think somebody's able to do that you don't think they're they should be able to do. I, I don't want to be. I want to be very careful not to be specific. Um, we all know. Well, we all know what the rules are, and some of us are probably more correct about what the rules are than others. Um, many of you are probably more familiar with the limitations than, than I am. But, um, but, you know, there are limitations that ordinary users are not supposed to be able to, to circumvent. If somebody has found a way to circumvent them, that's an important thing to report. It's an important. It's an even more important thing to report very, very promptly, and in very, very specific detail, um, because otherwise there might not be anything we can do about it. Yeah, and there is a uh, there is a bounty, by the way, on security issues. If you're the first person to report something that turns out to be a real problem, um, and you report it properly, that is a security JIRA, and you don't tell anybody else how to do it, uh, there's a bounty. I don't, I don't know exactly what it is. Right. Thank you, Izzy. Well stated. Yeah, I, I, it it is Linden dollars. I, I'm pretty sure it's more. Is it? Yeah, Whirly. Thank you. Ten thousand Lindens. That's that's not chump change. More than I've got at the moment. Okay, good. Good. Thank you.
Uh, that's that's good news. I look forward to seeing that. Post something on the forum when you know what it is people should upgrade to. Oh, I have run into some voice issues since the implementation of Jelly Dolls into the viewer. Um, for some reason, the viewers that have Jelly Dolls on it don't want to connect on voice for me. But the older viewers, like I'm on right now, connect with voice just fine. I don't understand the issue on what makes a difference, but it, something in the Jelly Dolls makes a difference in the way voice is connecting. There were no, there were no changes to voice in that viewer, uh, not in our version anyway. Uh, Oz, if I could just uh, make a, a point and a note on on the voice issue, um, I was speaking, I was speaking with uh, Midori. She was over at the at my region uh, just two days ago, and we were working on that issue because my region was not, uh, it's a mainland region, uh, was not connecting at all. I was getting. Uh, it was doing gray outs. It was timing out. Um, and what she did, she rolled the sim to a different uh, server channel, and that fixed everything. Um, she was wanting well, to change the, the server you, version. Did she also just try restarting the region? We tried, yeah. We, we tried starting the region multiple times, and they, it, it did not work. She had to change the actual server channel uh, in everything what, uh, what channel were you changing to and from? Were you in one uh, of the RC channels? Uh, she didn't send it to an RC channel. She was looking into seeing if mainland can be switched to an RC channel, but uh, she didn't oh, tell no, me no, which no, one. No. I don't yeah, know. She, she didn't tell me which one she changed it to. Um, yeah. Uh, the channels shouldn't make any difference because the the... The voice service is, I mean, it's the same service for all, for all of Agni. Um, I mean, the, the, right, right. Um, a restart, usually, of course, in order to change the channel, you have to restart. And a restart normally will, will cause the simulator to, pick up the latest uh, voice connection information. It's possible that what you were hitting was just, we did have a, we did have a couple of short voice outages last week where the voice service was, was, uh, was, you know, badly affected and, and depending on where you were connecting from, uh, you, you might have been unable to connect. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what she did. Um, she took the sim down for five minutes, and then she, she brought it back up online. Uh, but she did say that it was going to be down for five minutes, and right. then it came back up. Right. Um, the, 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 by leaving it down for five minutes, what that, what that does is it, makes it near certain that when it when the region starts up it will start up on a different host um because by then something else will have taken its slot on the first host and it, uh it, it has to do with how we allocate regions to to simulator hosts um so if you if, if, you, if you leave it down for a little while it you're you're guaranteed to come up on you're nearly guaranteed to come up on a different host um yeah there were some other anomalies that were going on not just with the um, with the voice server connection, um, there was also some anomalies where the um, the packet output was just being slammed, uh, and then in other instances it was the input that was being slammed. Um, she found an object that was named object in the region at a really odd altitude, and when she went up to it, she got kicked off three times. Uh, she got knocked off. Uh, it crashed her her. Uh, her viewer, twice I believe, and um, uh -huh. 
And when I was speaking with her, she tried to get to it, and when she got close to it, it would bounce around. When she tried to touch it, it would disappear. And right. she said it didn't matter which way she approached it, it was doing uh, that. It's, and, it's not likely that that was affecting boys. Um, but, uh, sure but yeah, was that was... Any- that was certainly that's certainly something that would that would be appropriate to file an AR on. Um, so uh, the um, it, it may have been that you were just unlucky about when you were attempting to, to connect voice and that and that it was the voice service was down. We did have a couple of short outages last week. Um, uh, I and would... earlier this week. I would do an AR, but not even not even Midori Lending can figure out who owns that object. And if she can't get a hold of the owner or the creator of that object, there's no way in the world I can. So there's just no way in the world to find an AR on something we can't even get a hold on. So, and she she advised me there was um, there were a few uh, well, even instances. If, even if you just file, I, I mean, Izzy. Yeah, just give the give a, a rough idea of where the coordinates are, and and somebody who's more experienced at hunting these things down can can go in and find it. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, you know, if you if you know roughly where it is, and yeah, then then there are people who are really good at this, and and they can they can go in and. She told me she was sending it over to the land group because it was beyond her. She couldn't, she just didn't have the uh-huh. tools. She said the land group has tools that can get in there and get the things that she couldn't. So she's already forded up the chain. So, okay. Good. Um, well, that's unlikely to be directly a problem with the, with the, uh, the related to the voice. Um, because actually almost the, the only, the only way in which the simulator is involved in um, in voice is, or even the simulator host is involved in 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 voice, is that when you first connect, you have to get the uh, basically the channel addresses to connect to from the simulator. So, it, of course, because that depends on what parcels you're in, so forth, uh, and um, and then once once that has happened, all the communication is directly from your viewer and your SL voice process directly to the Vivox voice services. So, and and the simulator isn't involved in any way; it doesn't even know that it's going on. Really, um, one of the things I'm working on in uh, you know sort of a side project is to because um, because we are planning a series of improvements to to our ability to to monitor and control voice uh, is some improved logging of the, of a finer grained logging that will go through the simulator on exactly what steps the, the the viewer is taking to to connect to voice and how long each step takes so that uh, we can get some some real metrics on it right now we can get information about voice connections that connect to the service because the voice process itself and the voice service provide those statistics. But what that doesn't get us is information about which of the three or four steps that it takes to create that connection in the first place didn't work. So I'm trying to add extra logging and information gathering around that stats around that. So we'll, we'll try to, we'll try to improve that and that'll come out uh, sometime soon, it, there's a new voice process update that uh, is part of that set of changes, and um, there's a there's a bug in that voice process that I want to I want to get addressed before we before we put that one out. The something about the distance attenuation is not working right. Mm. If you get if you get very far from people, you can't hear them. You you can't hear them at the right distances. So I I got to get that fixed before I can distribute that update. Uh, but then when we have that, we'll also add this better logging around creating voice connections. So, and then we'll, then we'll have real numbers that we can figure out what, what's going on. Uh, so looking forward to that sometime in the next few weeks, I'll, I'll, I'll probably have that update. 
one more question about land if i may ask sure i may not uh, be able to answer it but i, I can <laughs> take a stab at it uh, it's it's not that difficult um at least the question isn't um the way that the land um uh, allocates resources per square meter uh, just like objects are allocated per square meter uh, like when you subdivide you can you can allocate uh, or limit the amount of resources like objects or prims per parcel, sub-parcel. Um, what's that? Land impact. Land, land impact, impact, exactly. Value yeah. for each parcel, right? Uh, is there any way that it would be possible in the future to do the same thing with basically the other sim resources, such as script timing, um, URL fetches, um, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I think that would work better with griefing issues or region-wide griefing issues, uh, where if it's just impacting one parcel, it wouldn't affect the rest of the region. It basically impacts uh, out the parcel. No, it really there really isn't a way to do that um, because because a lot of the a lot of the things you're mentioning are not strictly speaking associated with a location. Um, so, uh, it, I mean, I guess it's software in theory, you could do almost anything, but it, it would be a, a, a pretty significant change. Um, cause right now, you know, we don't, um, when you're, when it's time to go and, you know, give every script its time slice, we're just going through all the scripts that are active in the region. Um, and we're not, they're not organized spatially, right? Um, and we don't have that. We don't have the information about where they are um, in the script engine uh, because it's usually not important. Um, so it's an interesting thought. Uh, the biggest complaint was regions, especially in mainland, is the biggest offender that someone will come in and buy a 1024-2048 parcel and use 100% of the SIM resources, both in agent uh, and script timing. Uh, they will literally max the SIM out. So now you right. got 2048 hogging the rest of the 63,000 some odd meters that has no available headroom to, to process right. anything. So there, there are various things that we're well, we're kind of constantly fighting this battle. Um, um, yeah, that, that is another good subject for an AR. Uh, the um, um, whether we're doing it spatially or not, um, there are things where we're improving our ability to throttle uh, the usage of script resources. Um, and for example, it we depending on on what resources we're talking about and which which LSL calls we're talking about, some of the things we're doing are are saying you know if you're consuming this kind of resource in a script or you're using this heavy heavy uh, script capability, um, then we'll throttle not only that script but all the scripts you own, right? Um, that are running, uh, so we'll reduce the amount of so we'll reduce things based on the on the script owner rather than on the script location. Um, but uh, you know that's it's it's not a it's not a super broad thing, but it is this we do have some some calls where where we do that, um, and of course it's a you have to understand. This is kind of a, and I didn't appreciate this when I, in, in as much detail as I do now, um, uh, when I took this job a couple of years ago, and 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 that is that this is kind of a constant running battle, right? I mean, it's a it's an arms race, right? right. People find Fine. new ways to suck up all the resources of the simulator or all of some kind of resource. And then we figure out ways to keep that from happening. And then they find a different thing to do. 
The trouble is that the system as a whole is so large and so complex that uh, it's kind of difficult to, to to do that in a in a completely general way. So it's it's kind of a, a game of whack-a-mole, um, and we we spend a lot of time on it. <laughs> It's, it's a very significant part of our day-to-day -day activity is chasing down, you know, somebody's found a way to, to lag regions by doing this or that, right? Or, or viewers by doing this or that. Uh, and it's a, it's a running battle, you know, we, we can't keep up with all of it. The better information you provide us through ARs and JIRAs about what Specific objects and so on are causing problems. Uh, the more we've got to work with, uh, that, that really is. I can't emphasize too much how important that is. I understand. Uh, and and again, you know, report it when it's happening or immediately after it happens, not next week. Next week, okay. the data about it is gone. And especially since griefers don't to leave, tend to leave their toys lying around for long periods of time, right? They come in, do their mischief, and then they go away. Uh, Hopefully that won't be an issue in Project Sansar, but nudge, nudge, wink, wink. No comment. <laughs> uh, if I knew, I wouldn't tell you, but I don't know. Because I've got way more to keep me busy in Second Life than I have time for. I don't even have the beginning of enough time to think about Sansa. So, I, I hope that you have a chance to find out for yourself real soon. I hope we all do. Not nearly enough hours in the day. Um, I, also, I have a kind of a request for you. What's that? Is it possible to do some changing with the way the textures upload to kind of help with the um, avatar complexities? Uh, what sort of change did you have in mind? Um, possibly something around um, maybe improving the way the compression ratios are working. Because I, the reason I'm asking is because sometimes people turn around and they put things like 1024 by 1024 textures on a prim that's maybe 0 0.01 in size. And that yeah, that's a something. pretty common problem. I'm not sure that it's something we can do anything about. Uh, I mean, you know, people people make bad content choices, and uh, there there isn't a lot we can do to keep them from doing that. I, um, yeah, if somebody has it. Actually, has been suggested that we charge differently for different size images. I'm I'm not sure that would actually help, but. Um, it, it might. It might actually be an encouragement because I know when uploading mesh that if I change some of the settings and reduce the um, amount of land impact and stuff that it has, it brings the price of the um, upload for mesh down. Right. Right. Um, so it, it might be an encouragement. It, it might help encourage that. It's. It's. Uh, it's possible. It's possible. Um, it, it has actually been. We have actually talked about it. Um, you know, I mean, the the upload cost is only ten lindens, which, uh, no matter how you figure it, that's pretty cheap. Uh, and I don't think we could. I don't think we could make it. Um, I don't think we could make it high enough, given the narrow range of sizes there are in the. To choose from. Uh, you see, I'm not so sure that would be a great idea, considering how much um, legacy, how many legacy prims are still out there. Uh, 
Um, maybe it's possible to change the way the prims compress large textures when reduced down to small or something. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. That's you're you're out of my, you're you're out of my uh, area. Expertise. Expertise, Expertise. there. I'm not a graphics guy. I'm a networks guy. But um, where. You know, we're uh, we're always looking for uh, for ways to do it. What we are, of course, doing is charging for them differently, and in terms of the um, rendering cost calculation, um, and that's the we will be taking another look relatively soon at how we're doing the the rendering cost calculations uh, to try to there's there there have been a number of issues with how those calculations are done that have been reported and some of them are very good cases and we're going to do another round of testing and it would also be tweak kind that of nice formula to, a little bit also it would also be kind of nice to, to have some way to optimize content that we're wearing because i know there's a lot of older content that we're clothing in things that was never optimized and when we attach it it's nobody knows how to optimize things that we were. So maybe yeah. adding some tools for that would help as well. Right. I mean, it would help if you were giving us more tools to work with to be able to, avatar, to optimize our own avatars and content we were creating. I mean, because for legacy prims, there's absolutely nothing other than pathfinding. Uh, Pantera, that's a that's an interesting idea. It's a very yeah, that, yeah. That is kind of interesting, considering that when you put a person goes on and puts in things like um, an ROV collar with um, cuffs, say eight cuffs, as well as a um, belt around their waist and stuff like that. That can get rather, that can cause the land impact or the avatar complexities to go real, 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 real high. We talked about that in the Firestorm beta testers group one day. And I was mentioning that. And that when I attach things like my collars and cuffs and things, my avatar complexities start jumping way high up there. And that's what the feature was designed to help you discover. And discourage you from doing. Yeah, but us, that's taking away from my fun with being able to. Um... <laughs> yep. Just I mean, call me spoil sport. Gotta, what can I tell you? you? You got a large percentage of people out there that enjoy partaking in BDSM, and that kind of. <laughs> well, I'm sure. Fun. Yeah, I, I, I am sure that there's. Lots of content in many different realms that are that is that is in need of optimization. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the that's the trick is to shop carefully. Well, I'm finding that when content creators create um mesh collars and mesh cuffs and things, it kind of brings the complexities down because there's not as many items in those in mesh cuffs and things like that. Yep.
Uh, any any other viewer issues before we before we go? I didn't catch if you mentioned anything on the sixty four bit viewer or not. I was a little bit tardy to the meeting. Mm -hmm. Um it's it's coming. We are actually making good progress on it now. Um okay. I'm hoping we'll have a project viewer in the next week or two. Excellent. Uh, which would be really, really, really great. We're I'm looking excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, we 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 had to kind of put that on the back burner to to solve some other problems for a little while, but um, we have picked it back up again, and we are actually working on it. So, um, hopefully, real soon now. Excellent. All right, I gotta go get ready for my next meeting. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Oz. Thanks, Oz. Thanks, Oz. Um, how are you doing today, Lizzie? Um, Izzy? Not Lizzie. Izzy. Izzy. <laughs> um, that's good. You too. Take care, Ryder. Um, Worley, uh, that jar you posted me, um, Was there anything with regards to how to fix the issues with um, your not connecting? Or was that just to what you think is causing the problem? <laughs>